Our first speaker is Marjorie Cohen. Marjorie Cohen is a professor at Thomas Jefferson School of Law. She's the past president of the National Lawyers Guild, and she's deputy secretary general of the International Association of Democratic Lawyers. She is a member of the board of directors of the San Diego American Constitution Society. She has authored several books, including her latest, The United States and Torture, Interrogation, Incarceration, and Abuse. She's a prominent speaker on human rights and, and civil rights, and she has written numerous articles. Last week she published two. Amazing. She writes regularly on several blogs, blogs and including her own, www.marjoriecohen.com. Please welcome Professor Marjorie Cohen. Everyone, it's just great to be here with all of you. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Citizens United, a little bit about how corporate per, per, corporations uh, became persons, and then uh, in a little musical interlude, and I'm afraid I didn't have more copies, but hopefully the a cappella choir, which has great voices and I don't, um, will join in. It's called Corpor The Corporations Cannot Pass the Belly Button Test. <laughs> So in Citizens United, a conservative five-justice majority of the Supreme Court gutted campaign finance laws saying that they violated corporations' freedom of speech. The court ruled that it was unconstitutional to limit in any way the amount of money that corporations can spend on attack ads or other electioneering communications to influence a political race. Citizens United opened the floodgates to unlimited independent election expenditures by corporations. The court struck down previous limitations on outside spending, the money channeled through organizations outside an official campaign, but which nonetheless run ads, make phone calls, and do lots of other things to support a campaign. With Citizens United, the Supreme Court not only made it easier to fund this kind of electioneering, but also made it harder for citizens to know who's actually behind it. Citizens United overturned more than a century of legal precedent by awarding corporations the rights of citizens with regard to electioneering. The court did away with limits on when corporations can spend on elections, how much they can spend, and how they can spend their money, allowing unlimited contributions from corporate treasuries to flood the electoral landscape. Justice Stevens wrote the dissent on behalf of the four liberals on the court. He wrote, yeah. The court's ruling threatens to undermine the integrity of elected institutions across the nation. While American democracy is imperfect, few outside the majority of this court would have thought its flaws included a dearth of corporate money in politics. <laughs> Stevens added, in the context of election to public office, the distinction between corporate and human speakers is significant. Corporations cannot vote or run for office. The financial resources, legal structure, and instrumental orientation of corporations raise legitimate concerns about their role in the electoral process. Stevens also wrote that corporations have no consciences, no beliefs, no feelings, no thoughts, no desires. Corporations, he wrote, help structure and facilitate the activities of human beings to be sure, and their personhood often serves as a useful legal fiction, but they are not themselves members of we the people, by whom and for whom our Constitution was established. So how did corporations become persons? The primary purpose of the 14th Amendment, which provides that all persons, 
have a right to equal protection under the laws, was enacted to protect the freed slaves. In 1886, the Supreme Court decided the case of Santa Clara County versus Southern Pacific Railroad. A passing remark by the Chief Justice before oral argument that corporations are entitled to protection under the 14th Amendment was recorded by the court reporter. That casual remark was picked up in later Supreme Court decisions affirming that corporations have constitutional rights. Corporations may own property, they can sue and be sued, they have the right to enter into contracts and advertise their products. Corporations have Fourth Amendment protection against unreasonable searches and seizures, and corporations are entitled to due process of law. Now, as Anne said, Citizens United gave birth to super PACs, which can destroy a candidate, no holes barred, no responsibility to those pulling the strings. They can raise unlimited amounts of money, and they are supposed to be independent from candidates. Now, those of you who have been following Stephen Colbert's candidacy, or exploratory yeah! candidacy, his exploratory candidacy, candidacy for the United States of South Carolina, <laughs> will know that when he handed over the reins of his super PAC to John Stewart, someone he had a passing acquaintance with, <laughs> that now, of course, they have no coordination with each other. It's a fabulous satire. I, I suggest that you tune in to both of those shows, The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. Now, these super PACs have changed elections. Over one-third of all outside ad spending in the 2010 congressional elections came from secret sources made possible by Citizens United. Super PACs gave Republican candidates who lost badly in Iowa and New Hampshire the money to keep going. Usually by now they would be out, but the super PACs are making everyone spend more money. As former Senator Russ Feingold, who was a Democrat from Wisconsin, him, himself a victim of Citizens United spending, said, it's going to be worse in 2012 unless we do something much worse. Okay, now, I'm going to lead you in this song. It's written by Nancy Schimmel, the daughter of Malvina Reynolds, and it was introduced to me by Ann Feeney, and it's called The Belly Button Test. And there are two verses which I will try to sing, but first I want to teach you the chorus, and this will be very quick. So the chorus is, the belly button test, the belly button test, a corporation cannot pass the belly button test. Okay, let's try the chorus. The belly button test, the belly button test. A corporation cannot pass a belly button test. Okay, now I'm going to do the verses. I, and excuse my voice, I'm not here as a singer, but it's just too good to pass up. <laughs> I've read some science fiction and I know how to tell. A human from an android, it's a lesson I learned well. If it doesn't have a navel, it's an alien at best. A corporation cannot pass a belly button test. The belly button test, the belly button test. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. If it cannot pass the test, the belly button test. It's some from it's from some lawyer's office or a pterodactyl's nest. Don't tell me it's a person, it is a thing possessed. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. The belly button test, the belly button test. A corporation cannot pass the belly button test. Thank you.